an afternoon at the card tables. Ray Pebbles, is it true you've got a deep pockets donor and all your money troubles are over? I took Chotu to the club yesterday for tea and Colonel told us. I'm very upset with you for hiding this wonderful news from us. You're a bad girl, Pebbles, said my Satyam Boa. Pebbles was immediately furious. That Colonel is a right blabbermouth. We all agreed to keep quiet until we actually received the money. But he's gone and jumped the gun. And with his parade ground voice, the whole club must have heard. She looked ready to box his ears, tiny as she was. And Sharmaji stepped in to pacify her. Pebilji, why you are taking so much tension? Now, cat is out of bag. We did not say, but Miss Edge and I also heard at Bluebell Bakery. No details, not even amount, only your worry jar over. But we have decided we will still support you. You are doing miracle in clinic. So good work. We can give our little help, no? Now Pebbles looked properly alarmed. That colonel needs a good horse whipping, if you ask me. This is exactly what we feared. It's not such a deep pockets donor as you called him, Satyam. Or that our worries are over, whatever you and Message heard at Bluebells, Sharmaji. We still need to collect funds. And whether we now can, after that fool colonel has made his loud mouth announcements, is yet to be discovered. Thank you for saying you will continue to support us. We would drown without our local donors. She positively wept over her cards as if they were the worst hand she'd ever been dealt. Of course, the big question on everybody's mind really was, how much? True to form, Message was the one who asked. Incidentally, I don't think anyone can recall her name anymore, perhaps not even her husband. When they first came up here, Sharmaji introduced her as his Message. And that became her name. Shant ho pebble and tell ki how much you are getting from secret donor. Nobody was even pretending to play anymore. Even Mr. Braganza, who had become so silent after Mrs. Braganza departed, lifted his eyes from his cards and stared. Pebbles threw down her cards in disgust. The figure is not so large, see, but he's committed to give it to us every year for the next five years. It took a lot of hard work, but I finally convinced him. The tension I experience every day, worrying how to pay the doctor and other staff wages, that's somewhat taken care of. All the running costs are still to be covered, so you lot better start countering the narrative when you hear it henceforth. Discreetly and with a well manicured index finger, she traced a number on the green felt of the card table. We all burst into applause. I gave her a hug. That's fantastic, Pebbles. And while I'm here, if I catch that colonel again, I'm going to knock him back a few paces on your behalf. And what's more, I commit every penny of today's winnings for your Hill Clinic. Everyone immediately agreed to that. And my Bua even said it was the first bit of sense she'd heard from me. High praise indeed. These five families have been friends for decades. Their numbers have been painfully declining in recent years. And every time I come up to visit Satyam Bua, my mother's aunt, there are one or two fewer of them. But they still meet regularly and keep each other's spirits up. Mr. Braganza signaled the end of the topic by picking up his cards and knocking them on the table. And for a while, they played seriously. Then message announced. There is excitement in school board also. We have great hope for twin sister. 
who want to study doctor and lawyer and we are hoping the result are good that they can join college of choice uncle mohan snorted don't be such an innocent message you've been telling us how smart they are but even if they get 200% they can't just walk into any college those days are gone you know that too well message since you run around the most to get admissions for them and still you say these silly things mohan message works very hard to get all her charges into college those two girls are brilliant and very hard working and what big dreams god knows they deserve a chance chotu isn't half as clever and he got into college so why shouldn't they burst out satyam boa even before sharma ji could spring to his wife's defense uncle mohan immediately apologized and message accepted it with good grace and no one bothered about my hurt feelings so i protested loudly i worked hard to get where i am boa but it's true i must be a half wit to keep coming up here to visit you when all you ever do is insult me she gave me an affectionate rap on the wrist with the fan she always carried and i held out a moment before saying sanctimoniously i accept your apology which just earned me another rap not so gentle this time boa mentioned that her students at the convent were coming along nicely too she taught fine arts watercolor oil painting and reverse painting on glass which is quite a remarkable skill she used to teach embroidery knitting crochet and lace making but the girls weren't interested in those arts anymore uncle mohan announced he'd been for a round of golf on thursday mera auntie gave him a warning look over her spectacles but he didn't notice and i started counting under my breath 101 102 103 i'd not even reached 7 when he burst out the greens are an unholy mess wasn't like that in my day and i suddenly discovered a fascination for my shoelaces which earned me another subtle tap on the back from boa's fan everyone stared intently at their cards and uncle mohan went on like a steam engine huffing and puffing through his complaint they'd retired him as groundskeeper saying it was a burden on him at his age and put in this scoundrel of a chap at half his age and twice his pay to do one tenth of the job and he couldn't complain or they think it was sour grapes which it most certainly wasn't as the greens were an unholy mess which anyone with the least bit of brain should be able to see sharma ji the inveterate peacemaker requested his help to go outside for a while he needed some air uncle mohan was immediately all concerned and the rant was stopped mid torrent as the two old men supported each other out of the room aunty meera made to apologize but no one would have it he was quite right about the greens so they were all tired of hearing it boa tinkled her little bell and ram singh was instantly beside her he accepted the detail order for the coffees and teas attentively as if it were any different from the hundreds of other times he'd received it no order for me as if i was still in the nursery and in short pants so i requested a double whiskey on the rocks having sidled carefully out of range of boa's fan ram singh gave me a crisp nod both of us clear that no such beverage was expected he had the tea laid out in minutes boa had made my favorite deviled eggs and pebbles had brought her famous avocado and pickled celery salad aunty meera had brought her delicious lemon and poppy seed biscuits which she said was strictly for me so though we put them out on the table no one touched them i didn't object more for me was my eminently practical stance boa sandwiches are renowned the bread is sliced so thin it's almost transparent and the crusts tidily trimmed away a waste of good bread but oh so delicious like little puffs of cloud 
She taught Ram Singh to slice each store-bought slice evenly in half. And I tried it once, so I can tell you it's no mean feat. A citrus tea cake with spirals of candied orange peel rained on a stately old cake stand. Tiny cocktail potato bondas came freshly fried from the kitchen to fill the pretty dish next to the cut glass bowl of coconut chutney. We all prowled around the table seeking our personal favorites. The old china plates were covered in fine veins. They have a fancy French name, but I call them character lines. I love the feel of them. It's like holding history in your hands. The pale blue tea napkins were edged in exquisite lace, handmade by Bua herself, of course, the like of which you could never match. The whole experience was otherworldly. They went back to their cards. I sprawled on a sofa as the afternoon faded, thinking how like stepping back in time it was to come up here to be with my mother's Bua. Like the mountains surrounding us, the characters were statuesque, busy at volunteer work even in their 70s and 80s and giving no indication of stopping. As the evening darkened, Ram Singh arrived on silent feet, switched on the twin chandeliers and melted away soundlessly. I wished I could bottle the essence of the evening and save it, so I could take a whiff any time I wanted and be transported back into this room with these charming people, the curved-legged card tables, the tapestry-seated chairs, the wafer-thin sandwiches, the old but irreplaceable lace lampshades shedding their warm glow over a kind and considerate friendship undimmed by years of togetherness. That essence, it would be priced above rubies.